What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Salty Locks. We are back in St. Thomas. It's carnival time in the VI. Um, it's parade day, but guess what? It's raining like crazy. We're supposed to go diving. I'm not going to the parade. We're going on Asia's purple butterfly boat. Little boat, tiny boat. I'm sure you've seen it before. If not, go back to this video up here. I don't know what the visibility is gonna look like with all this rain, but stick with us. Had to go grab my fish bucket. Whoa. And here, my friends, you have a great example of what happens to these lovely locks when I go diving. My hair is all nice and curled up right now. I guess what? Once I get in that water, gone. <laughs> and here's what the weather forecast looks like today. The rain has subsided just a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take this window to get into the water. Yo, this tree is full of sour sap. Full of sour sap. Look at this. Hey guys, we headed up the road. I don't even know where to tell y'all that we're going because we didn't really discuss it. Joe decided where we were going. I was about to get out on the boat, but guess what? You'll see us down there. Oh, it's colored water. Oh the visibility God. is really, really good. I wish the sun was up. Jesus, bread. That is freaking awesome. Do you hear those birds? We are at the Buck Island National Wildlife Refuge. Buck Island is located two miles south of St. Thomas. It was established as a wildlife refuge in 1969 due to its value for migratory birds. It is managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Bird watchers may see tropic birds, frigate birds, laughing gulls, and many others in the vicinity of the island. The refuge boundary extends to sea level and does not include submerged or marine habitat. So here we are. Fun fact, there are three Buck Islands in the Virgin Islands. One near St. Croix, one in the British Virgin Islands, and this one near St. Thomas. I see a few queen triggerfish up ahead. In St. Thomas, they are referred to as old wife, but that's not what I'm interested in today. I kick up a little sand to see if I can get anything to come in for a closer look. At this point, I'm 24 minutes into the dive and haven't seen anything I want to take home. Still following the guys because they have visited this spot once before. This stingray is in a common position, buried in the sand. They use this as a method of camouflage. This is also the position in which they feed, but this one seems to just be resting. There, I finally spot some antennas peeking out from a rock hole in the coral reef. It's a nice hefty spiny lobster. I'll take the easier route today and grab this one with the lobster snare.
one lobster in the bag and now it's time to meet back with the guys already up on the boat. On Buck Island, there is a historic lighthouse. Though it is no longer operational and it is closed to the public, it's one of the only three Danish-built lighthouses in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The Buck Island Light Station was erected in 1913. The lighthouse was owned by Denmark at the time of the transfer of the Danish West Indies to the United States in 1917. We cruise around the area in between dives to scout and to pass the time needed for our surface interval before dive two. The sun is hiding, so the breeze is making it a bit chilly out here. I got a pretty good body shot on this mackerel. However, they have very soft meat. So if you don't get control of the fish in time, you will likely lose it. He probably heard me fussing and came by to see what was up. And now we pan over to JP who has found some lobster. Every once in a while you get a fish that's curious with all the activity and may come in for a closer look. With a lobster in one hand and an active fish on the line, JP rings for some help. Another good reason to make sure you are buddy diving whenever you venture out. The fish has created a tangled mess.
There were lobster under the ledge, but I didn't have my flashlight and decided to move on. It was good timing considering that this big mackerel happened to be passing by right after I lifted my head. Unfortunately, my camera was pointing down, but I landed this fish perfectly. It doesn't happen every time, but this is the shot we are aiming for most times. Hitting the lateral line on the body of this fish means you won't have to fight to hold on to your catch. Forgive my excitement, but this was the biggest mackerel I've caught to date. I wish it was normal for me to see them this big. The shooting line got caught in the custom nozzle and this could have easily been a missed shot. I showed Joe the issue so he can repair his gun later. And before long, what do I see? You guessed it, a shark. Clearly the underwater ecosystem in St. Thomas is doing well. I'm not letting go of this mackerel unless necessary, and right now, this hefty fella is just circling curiously. I pay very close attention to their behavior. Just a note, I always wear a shark bands bracelet on my right ankle. Does it help? Well, I'll put it to you like this. It seems that sharks tend to always do a sharp turn into the other direction once they get too close to me but I don't allow this to give me a false sense of security. I'll leave a link in the description below. You can try it for yourself. I've decided I don't want to spend the remainder of my dive making sure that a shark doesn't take a bite out of my fish. The boat is more than close enough to get it out the water and return to worry-free hunting. Of course, this doesn't automatically mean that the shark goes away, but I'm eliminating any reason for it to want to get close to me.
We go ahead and start cleaning the catch while out on the boat because I plan on going fetting tonight. Here's some of today's catch. I make quick steaks of the mackerel before heading out to the carnival village. Stay tuned for some entertainment. Since I was your runner, I don't want to 